Um, who are we? Okay, Morgan Stanley, if you haven't heard of our name, then you must be living in a closet. Um, we are one of the largest, if not the largest, financial services corporation on the planet. And if we're not the largest yet, we're trying to be. We're trying to take the world over. Um, this chart here just simply shows the broad variety of different businesses we're in. We're in the securities business, for institutional securities, you know, mergers and acquisitions, um, securities underwriting, all that kind of stuff, none of which I understand anyway. Asset management. Um, for both institutions and for people like you and me who can walk into an office with, you know, 500 bucks or whatever the minimum account value is and start trading um, and lose it all in a big hurry if you're not careful. And you've probably heard of the Discover card. What's most relevant for this talk is probably talking about what we don't do. We don't sell software. Um, software is a means to an end for us, and the end being these various financial services that we offer. Um, we do consider software development and that, that knowledge about software development a critical competency because you know in an enterprise at our scale you just can't go down to Egghead Software or CompUSA and buy the pieces you need plug them together and instant enterprise it doesn't work like that you have to craft it and I really do believe it's an art <clears throat> and that involves developing a lot of software for our own purposes both applications and infrastructure so to talk about the the infrastructure I'll be talking about today, in which this open source story takes place, really is limited to the institutional security side. We merged with Dean Witter three years ago, um, or actually 1997, I guess that was four years ago, I lose track. And they were the retail asset management side of the business. Now, as a business, we're one big giant firm, but technologically, we're still very different. The online brokerage people, still a different infrastructure from the asset management folks at the old Dean Witter, from Institutional Securities and Morgan Stanley. And we've, we've sucked up a few small companies that still have their own technology infrastructure. I'm going to be talking about what we've done in Institutional Securities, which was the pre-merge of Morgan Stanley. So <clears throat> to talk about that infrastructure, I first have to give my usual rant about scale um, and decided to change that to a rant about diversity because that really describes this whole environment. It's diverse in many, many ways. Um, geographically, we're diverse. We're on every continent except Antarctica, and we're just waiting for the first stock exchange to open on the Ross Ice Shelf. And we'll move there, too. I don't personally want to be transferred there, but I'm sure we can find someone. Um, 52 cities on six continents. It really is very, very broadly spread out. But not only is it geographically diverse, it's also diverse in terms of scale. In other words, we have to think both at large and small scale at the components of this infrastructure. Our, our largest site is clearly New York City, where we've got well over 2,000 machines. And that number is biased because I'm talking about the Unix infrastructure there. Um, I confess to not knowing much about IBM mainframe, and I have vowed I'll never log into NT again, so I don't really even know much about that either. But our small sites have to go down to maybe 10 users. We've got to figure out a way to have an infrastructure that can deliver all these really cool technology solutions, both to the monstrous site like New York, but also down to the small offices where we have a, a, a small site that doesn't justify you know, spending millions on dedicated you know, servers and hardware just for that site. You've got to come up with clever solutions for that. The bandwidth varies wildly as well. Um, it goes everything from you know, as, as fast and as broad as you can get in our metropolitan area networks to some pretty pitifully tiny pipes going to some of the small branch offices. It's also got a diverse set of platforms. And I apologize for the question marks on the IBM mainframe section. I was supposed to get those numbers back. Um, I know we have a lot of it. That's where most of our back office accounting is still to this day done. Um, I've highlighted the Unix environment in red because that's really where most of this open source success story takes place. Um, not to say we don't use open source on these other platforms. In fact, Linux on the S290 um, is a very, very exciting piece of technology we are seriously looking at. And we do some Perl development on NT, and there are some other open source components on NT, but like I said, I don't do NT, so I'm not going to talk about NT. A couple other important aspects of diversity would be our developer diversity, and this is where I can get in trouble and get fired if I'm not careful. Um, we've got well over 2,500 people in information technology. We have about 1,000 software developers, and this is where I've got to be careful. Widely varying skill levels. We have some of the smartest people on the planet working for Morgan Stanley. Um, we also have some people we hire because their business knowledge is really good, but as coders, they leave something to be desired. The result is, and remember, we're not, soft, we're not a software development firm. We're a financial services firm. If you know, we hire some guy who's a rocket scientist with respect to Black Scholes implementations or, or some, other financial, um, some other financial area that, that they know well, we're hiring for that reason, not because they're a Perl guru. They may have Perl and C++ and Java in their resume, and they go, great, they can code it. But that's not why we hire them. The result is a very, very diverse installed software base. 
the, my least favorite part of my job is code review for two reasons. One, only the people who write bad code ask for code review. And two, only the people that write bad code ask for code review. Um, it's depressing. It really is depressing sometimes to see how poor some of the code is that runs our business. Um, but that's not to say all our code is bad. That would definitely be fired. A lot of it's really good, a lot of it's really bad. That in and of itself leads to some really difficult challenges in trying to change this infrastructure and move it forward. It's not static. You know, we're trying to upgrade operating systems, database versions. Every single piece of software in our environment is constantly changing and moving forward on some kind of sane schedule. An environment like this, change control, is probably our single biggest problem. Uh, linguistic diversity, yeah, we're all over the planet, so we do lots of languages. Not too relevant for this. Um, the language diversity, I think, is an important one. And people may be surprised to see C listed as a minor language. The major languages here, the top three are the big ones. Um, C++, Java, and Perl are clearly our top three development languages, and C is not something we encourage people to work in directly, even though most open source is written in, in, in C. Um, large reason there being we want people to work at a higher level. Now, if you're an infrastructure developer working on core level infrastructure, file system stuff, kernel systems, yes, you're coding in C. But if you're writing an end user application, we try to encourage people to stay with higher level APIs.